All right, we're going to talk about three commonly seen speed faults, uh, at least that I see, and, and, and some fixes, some possible fixes for, for these faults here. So uh, number one, we're going to talk about uh, having short steps in acceleration or not driving all the way through those steps. Uh, in the same exercise, you can also alleviate the rearing up fault or the getting vertical too soon. Uh, we're going to do that with a, with a sled sprint and a contrast body weight sprint. Uh, number two, we're going to talk about shoulder sway when cutting laterally, and, or shoulder sway and lateral movement. And number three, we're going to talk about the need for linking skills uh, in your speed and agility program and how they'll improve those. So with that said, let's take a look at these three faults. All right, here we are with the first of our three speed faults. And we all have seen those athletes that don't drive through their steps in acceleration or what I have what I call those Fred Flintstone steps, those short little ones here. And so we're gonna use a sled uh, today sled sprint to a body weight sprint to help alleviate uh, that fault there. So the sled sprint is going to give us a resistance for us to lean against and it's going to force us to drive down and back uh, to move forward in acceleration. We're going to immediately follow that up with a contrast body weight sprint. We're going to use that as a primer. Uh, we're going to use the sled sprint as a primer to help benefit uh, the, the actual body weight sprint to uh, kind of ensure that we uh, teach staying in that lean and driving down and back. So let's take a look. So you want to make sure that you have enough weight that you're not, you don't want, if it's too light, you're going to kind of be pushing the sled out in front of you and it's going to be almost like you're falling. So you want to make sure it's the appropriate amount of weight. I'm going to sprint five yards here, turn around and come back on a body weight sprint. I want you to pay attention uh, to my body weight sprint to see if I uh, drive down and back. And I, I've, I've had a lot of success with this, with athletes that kind of driving through the that first five yard acceleration in sports there, in team sports. And uh, we've been kind of playing with it for a while. And so we're seeing the success. Kids are learning, athletes are learning how to drive down and back all the way through their step. Uh, and it's been a lot of fun uh, watching the kids improve. All right, now for our second fault, or speed fault, we're gonna talk about in lateral movement, a shoulder sway that occurs. So if I am shuffling to my left, and my shoulders sway this way, which we see a lot in, in, in court sport athletes, and I need to go that way, it slows me down for obvious reasons right here. So when we're moving and cutting and changing directions, ideally we keep our shoulders between our pockets right here so this doesn't occur and I can go in my new direction. So one uh, uh, kind of tool that I've used, and I got this from Lee Tab, but one tool I've used to kind of alleviate this is a, a simple med ball and I'm gonna force my uh, mistake, my error, at the same time as my foot contact. And I think it's really important to coordinate the upper body with the foot contact right there to create stiffness uh, in synchrony when making a cut. So I'm gonna go here over my head and force that shoulder sway. And that forces me to get stiffness and prevent that shoulder sway. So now we can build this out with some momentum, momentum uh, some momentum. So we're here, here. I can take a, uh, take a step over, shuffle. Right there. And now I'm adding, I'm making it more dynamic, more demanding on my body. And I'm, and I'm building my capacity to uh, create stiffness in a cut. And a third fault we see a lot of time in, in team sports is the inability to transition from one movement to another. And for an example of that, it may be something like I'm closing out in basketball, I'm closing out on a shooter, and I have to change directions if they shot fake and try to drive to the basket. So, or if I'm coming up to the net in volleyball and there's a tip, I come up, I have to change directions and, and, and make a play somewhere else. So there's two things that need to occur uh, in, when, when transitioning from one movement to another. Usually you need to decelerate and then you need to reaccelerate in another direction. So uh, we're going to talk about two things that we might call a linking skill uh, to help that transition. We've got two examples of decelerating and then we'll show you an example of uh, a linking skill that might transition us from one movement to another. So uh, really simple, two deceleration options that you have are a stutter step or a split step. So a stutter step, a kind of choppy step going into it, and then a split step is you come up and you split your feet. Or if I'm going here, 
split your feet like that. So the important thing with both of those is the weight on your feet. So if I come in and I'm either too far forward or too much on my heels, I won't be able to transition to the next movement. Uh, speed and agility is always about the next player, the next movement. So you have to be set up well for that. So once I have decelerated with that split step or stutter step, now I have to have what we call, might call a, a hip turn uh, in order to get to the next play. So here's my linking skill. Linking skill number one, decelerate. Linking skill number two, transition into the next movement. Okay. And those are two very, very important skills to have if you're gonna play a multi-directional sport like tennis, basketball, volleyball, and so forth. So try those out, see if they help. All right, now that we've seen the faults and fixes, let's talk about application. We gave you a linear fault and fix, a lateral fault and fix, and a multi-directional fault and fix. It will be best if you program these on different days so we're not giving too much for the body to adapt to or change. You will get a better result from that. Apply these to your athletes and watch your athletes' multi-directional speed and, and, and their athletic abilities grow. You'll see them change directions better. You'll see them get to from A to B and make the play a lot quicker. If you guys like this video, Feel free to share it to the universe. If you want more information on how to enhance your training program or grow as a, as a strength and conditioning coach, head to www.ifastuniversity.com.